Okay, <clears throat> so in the first tutorial, we looked at just the basic overview of setting up a mesh network and uh, building a set of stairs, basically, they, uh, dis uh, with the distribute node set to linear. So we're going to um, look at a different type of distribution and also, again, reinforce the, um, uh, the importance of where the transform sits for not only the prototype object, but the copies that are made. So I'm going to go ahead and start again with a little cube there. And uh, let's go over to MASH and create our network as usual. Uh, also, oops, looks like that got undocked. So let's, let's put that in. All right, so I have a little MASH network. OK, so we've created uh, a little list like we had before. All right, so we've got our 10 little copies. Uh, but let's go and change this, actually. Let's go to the distribute. So we messed with the, all these parameters here a little bit. Um, so let's uh, just turn that off. And instead of a radio or linear, let's go ahead and choose radial. Right, easy enough. Let's, uh, let's make it a little bit smaller. And let's make the number of copies 36. So basically every 10 degrees, right? So every <clears throat> along that 360 degrees, it's putting one down. And we get these copies, <coughs> right? Um, you can uh, change this to be located along a different axis. So uh, this would be a good example. You could actually set it to be a, uh, some stairs. You could animate this if you wanted. Um, I'll just leave it at 360. Um, but you could also do the Z offset. Look at that nice little spiral staircase if you need it. But we will, let's just zero that out and I'm set it back here. Okay, so <clears throat> what I want to show here is let's uh, click on the MASH uh, network so I can see these other little nodes I want to add to it. So in this example, I wanted to create some noise. So if I click on signal is uh, where the noise parameters uh, are. And I'll go ahead and add uh, a signal node. Right, I'll just leave it at the default for a second. And what you will see here, if I press play, look at that, little dancing cubes. Kind of fun, right? You can see that they're, um, you know, in fact, if I look almost straight on, you can see these cubes are moving pretty much. In fact, let's just make this zero and that zero. So you can move, you can see this cube is moving up and down, right? These cubes are moving up and down but they're not moving up and down to the center, right? So they're using a transform, a transform space that's the world coordinates, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and change this to local. So you can see now they're all moving from the center because what's happened is that object has been oriented in a radial pattern and it's also been pushed out along that center, but it's individual, um, uh, transform XYZ each one of these in its local space is lined up along that axis of the uh, the cube right so this one the Y would be pointing along here <clears throat> so that's helpful information right okay, so let's um, turn this off and actually instead of doing something with the uh, the position let's do something with scale and we'll just do that so if I press play you can see now the 4D noise, uh, this randomization through here is um, B is affecting the scale. And as a default for the signal uh, node, you have the uniform scale is turned on, which just means that the, uh, the cube itself, um, uh, sorry, the scaling is happening if, once we change the X. It's going to do the same for the Y and the Z. So they're... Um, grayed out. Sometimes you just want to make things, a population uniformly bigger or smaller without distorting the, the size of it, the scale in one particular direction. But in this case, actually, we do want to do that. Um, also, we'll turn on the, the positive scale. Um, well, I guess we'll see that here in a second. We'll leave that on. So I'm going to turn off uniform scale. And you can see now it's just scaling along the X. And of course, each, because it has local space, Right? 
And that's along that outer edge, which is kind of cool. Um, but, uh, oops. Now the one thing you should know too is so when the mash is playing, it's doing a lot of calculations. So when you play it and you start making changes over here, sometimes the, uh, um, even though you make changes here, it doesn't update in the, the animation itself. So sometimes you just have to press, I would say, I would advise, go ahead and press pause, make your changes, then press play and see what it's doing. All right, so I'm going to leave the X and the Z alone. I'm going to scale it on the Y. All right, so this is interesting to me. Um, but I don't really care for the fact that as it scales, you can see that it's scaling at both ends, right? I want it to be pretty much a circle and spikes radiating out based on the noise for whatever reason, right? It could be whatever little motion design kind of thing going on here, right? All right, so how do we change that? Lots of different ways, I guess, but first thing like that is we'll go back to this uh, this idea that the the transform is going to stay at a certain location right and i'm just going to move the components oh, in fact let's do this in the view so you can see it ah, i got turned around there all right right can you see how they're all reacting to that space And I'm just going to eyeball it for this, but I could snap it down or whatever. It's not going to matter. So I've moved the vertices up, but you can see that the transform is right there at the bottom of this. So as you would expect, um, let's click on our little mesh and the signal parameters, just crank it along. So let's put this back. Right. So you can see you're getting a lot of these randomized uh, values. Um, you'll notice that every once in a while that the scale goes to uh, zero, right? We get this little flat thing. And just when the, the uh, we can tell it to do two-sided lighting, which means show us the front side and the back side of the, uh, the polygon so we don't get any black ones in that. So right, this is compressing basically down to zero and um, we get this cool little animation. Let's... Uh, Experiment here. We've got other types. So we've got this looping noise, um, which you can barely see. It's just moving ever so slightly. We could change that down below. Or I'll leave that alone with the looping one. Let's actually go with the uh, Brownian one. That's the one I like a lot. Right, so it's uh, calculating this uh, so that there's um, continuity between the um, the neighbors as far as which, you know, how it's scaling, right? So we get this smoother section. Um, the way that we, um, so we have the noise settings here, um, and we also have these, the trigonometry, so it's basically a thing that's generating all these changes. We can change the step amount. Um, oops. We could change, oh, in fact, that's not the one I wanted. To, I mean, you can't change that. Uh, I'm gonna change the noise scale. You can see already it's doing a lot of changes, right? So the speed with which that is happening. And what I'm going to do is just turn down the time scale, right? So looks similar to what we had in the first one, right? So you can play with this scale, do lots of different things. Right, so move it down again, we get this little now we get kind of the slow motion, right? So a lot of different parameters you can really play with. I think it's uh, fun and exciting. I'm going to find a little happy medium maybe. Yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, so I'm going to leave that there. All right, so uh, so we created a new mesh network. Um, we've got a little signal in there, and we changed the distribution to uh, radial. All right, so let's just try one more. Um, distribution type and in this one this will be a favorite and let me turn off the grid and um, so let's select this little polyplane and let's maybe give it 40 subdivisions like this and we'll do a quick little 
sculpt B and what is the intensity of the brush? I always forget. Strength. Let me just turn that on. Do do do. And I'm just gonna smooth this out a whole bunch. I'm just creating a little train here. Doesn't even matter. Mm -hmm -hmm. Kind of fun. Mm -hmm. Maybe big cavern there, right? Okay. All right. So now I have some geometry to work with. So let's go back to the. Uh, we've got an outliner here. So that's the polyplane there. So I'll go back to uh, the distribute node. And we met, uh, messed with uh, linear and radial. Um, Sphericals, uh, you can experiment with that. There's some, uh, basically tries to move the transform in these little arcs in a spherical uh, cluster. Used it before, it's great. Uh, but one that's very effective is this, and very useful in many instances, is mesh. Okay, so in fact, uh, let's just note this together. I'm gonna change this back to linear. And then I'm going to go back to mesh. And you can see it says mesh. It wants to say, please connect a mesh. So right now there's 36 it wants to generate. It wants to distribute them across a mesh. It wants to just scatter them across the mesh. There's other methods of doing that. And so it can be a little random. Uh, but it wants to know what the input mesh is. So if I go to the outliner, there's two ways to do this. Um, one would be to, um, with this pane open, to take the middle mouse button, you can see it has a little plus sign, and drag and drop it in here. But for whatever reason, my mighty mouse doesn't like to do it. Uh, um, my magic mouse, sorry, doesn't like to do that on the Mac. I hate this mouse. Got to get a new one. Um, but if I also, with the P plane uh, one uh, selected, if I right click, it will take whatever's selected and make that connection. Oops, so that freaks out a little bit. Uh, Mesh, distribute, there we go, right? So I just right clicked and did that little connect in there. And you can see it is now put all these little cubes on there. <laughs> right? Now who doesn't think that's fun? Um, let's go back to the distribute. Um, I don't know, 250. hilarious, right? <clears throat> um, we could go back, so here's our, oops, our, <clears throat> our little cube. And if I want to, let's just uh, let's make them a little bit thinner. And I'll make them a little bit taller. Right, again, I'm just doing that at the component level. I left the transform alone. And you can see I'm getting all this fun zaniness. Let's go back to the editor. Look at distribute. Um, let's see, scatter. You can tell it to scatter along the vertex, right? And of course I need a whole bunch more. Hopefully you're starting to see the power of this uh, wonderful little tool, right? So if you're being experimental, you're making graphics, um, and at the same time, if you, uh, just the way this is being done, you could use this in such a way where you would just um, populate a forest, right, with this, um, let's see, let's tell it not to calculate rotations. So now it's just finding the surface itself. So instead of um, organizing itself along the normal, it is now just placing itself along the, the surface itself, right? Which is pretty fun. <clears throat> Let's do um, one last thing. Oops, let's see here. Strength, there we go. 
So I can randomize the strength here about where it's placed in that. And you can see it's like flowing across the whole entire surface. I can randomize that. So I'm just getting it in certain places. <clears throat> There's lots of different ways I can approach that. If I can use the, uh, let's just go back to scatter, right? So we just scatter it across the surface. That's a turbulent node. We can push it along the normals. So, so many different things we could do, right? Um, let's put it back along the vertex. Okay, so that's another fun distribution method is the, the mesh itself. Um, again, there's some others in here, volume and grid, but I really think you can get a lot done using linear, radial, and the mesh itself. So many different things, other things that you could add to the uh, mesh network, but I think that'll do for now.